All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode here on Man Made Customs. So today I'm gonna to run you through a couple uh, soft baits that we have with our partners over at uh, Bass Reaper Baits. Um, so these guys recently joined, they opened up a shop. Uh, just to be clear, when you sign up to open up a shop on MMC, uh, it's completely free. Uh, we don't charge any you know, sort of sales uh, commission, none of that. You open up a shop, if you sell something for 10 bucks, you keep 10 bucks. So that's the cool thing that we've got going on right now. Um, and it's a pretty sweet deal mostly because a lot of guys are tired of you know companies um, taking a ridiculous amount of money uh, for every sale they take so you have no web fees it's not like you go to GoDaddy buy a domain shop with us e-commerce uh, site so maybe you could get some uh, sales for whatever products you're selling so huge shout out to Bass Reaper Baits their baits are great uh, we've taken them out many times uh, so far the largemouth love the lizard they love the craw um, and these guys are actually, the paddle tail is actually a really, really good bait for the peacock bass. So what I wanted to do today is kind of just talk about bass reaper baits uh, in general, um, kind of touch base on the ones that they sent me, how I've used them so far, the best ways they've worked for me, um, and basically how I've been able to capitalize on some fish um, using their bait specifically. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is a weedless rig and why it's important. So what I have here is your regular bass hook. Um, and what I've done is basically just run it through the top. Um, I still actually have the knot uh, attached to when I had it attached to the leader. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and just put that straight through on the barb side. Then you're gonna run it up and basically just attach this side up on the, on the top. It sounds like a lot, but it's relatively simple. Um, and the whole point of a weedless rig is so you don't have the barb exposed or you don't have anything that could um, technically catch onto a weed, a rock, or anything of that nature. Um, you go weedless basically when you're fishing in an area that has a lot of hydrilla, duckweed, stuff that could basically mess with your um, overall ability of catching a fish in whatever scenario you're in. So sometimes it's smart to fish weedless, other times it's, it's better to um, just go a traditional route. The only reason I would ever go weedless is if I'm, if I'm like I said, if I'm in thick foliage. So this particular rig, um, it doesn't have a weight. This rig does have a weight. So this is an attached weight that came with the hook. So there's a couple different ways, by the way, they're the same exact, you know, they're both uh, purple lizard, um, great baits. I actually use these in the Everglades for those of you who are watching from South Florida. This color in particular in murky waters is amazing for the largemouth. Um, and I'm gonna get into detail why there's a difference between these two and how it could actually be pretty important um, to bring both, not just one of each, if that makes any sense. So to touch base on the weightless, um, on the weightless uh, rig, basically this will sink very, very slowly to the bottom and even kind of maintain level in the water. So in other words, it's gonna sink just because this tends to sink, the dense rubber with the hook, it's gonna sink, but it's gonna sink really, really slow to a point that it could even stay kind of mid-water. So little jerks like this um, will attract uh, leveling fish. So fish that are kind of not at the bottom, you know, there's not a lot of structure around, it's not too steep, there's no rocks, no ledges, um, you know, and, 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 they're, and they're kind of on the surface or on the bank, you wanna go with something weedless just because there's a lot of plants around and you're not gonna be hitting or dragging dust, getting on the bottom. How many times have you thrown something that was, thrown something that was too heavy got stuck on the bottom and it kind of messed with your with your bite so that's something that you would see happen with a weighted uh, rig like this one so basically uh to the name an example when we're out in the everglades um and i see some sort of spawning uh peacocks or a spawning uh largemouth bass or they're protecting fry something like that you want to throw something that's weight uh that has no weight or maybe even you want to throw a jerk bait or some sort of twitch bait um something that stays level no no uh no lips so it's not going to be diving uh, so basically you can capitalize on some fish uh, that are on the surface, midwater, or under uh, a really hard area that you can't normally get to. So maybe whether it be logs or rocks, this is the rig you want to use. Um, and we'll talk about which bait is better for what, but for, for now we're talking about the weights. So this weight is actually amazing. Um, and I say it's amazing because it's very sleek, and believe it or not, fish don't really notice it. So I've noticed sometimes if I put a, uh, one of those cap weights, the weights that go on the top, I've noticed that there's times that they don't bite as well or they kind of like see something's off, but this almost resembles like the belly of a fish. So a lot of times I thought it was really outlandish, excuse me, but after talking to some people, 
Um, it's actually really something that I think fish do look for. Uh, as natural as the bait looks as possible, um, the better off you are. So in this perfect, a perfect example of using this is when you're trying to get on a ledge um, or you're trying to uh, reach an area that might be, you know, more than your five feet level surface or you're trying to get the bottom because there's a bottom bite. Um, or, you know, let's say you're on a bass boat, you see on the sonar that there's some sort of ledge that you want to fish. You want to throw something weighted so it gets down there quick enough. Um, this will get down there, but it's going to take quite a while. Um, and it's not as effective when you're jerking. This is going to swim upright kind of like this off the surface and resembling some sort of, you know, lizard or um, something naturally that they see that moves in that manner. Uh, so basically, whenever you're fishing a deep water area, high currents, um, and, you're, and you're not technically trying to get on the bank, but rather just reach the bottom because you know there's a structure down there, throw a weedless rig that has a weight. Um, and you can do this with any bait. You can do this with this, uh, with that paddle tail. You can do it with a craw. So there's really no limit to using um, a, weighted, a weighted hook, but you want to use it wisely. So best way to use this, hitting structures. You know the bottom's got some movement. Throw on a, a weighted hook, and you're definitely going to see some, uh, some benefits to you know, using a weight, getting down there quicker. Another, uh, we actually made a video on this, um, and you guys can check it out. It's Peacock Bass Fishing. Uh, it's on the Man Made Customs channel. We use this swim bait, um, and we really went in depth with the swim bait just because it was, you know, it's really, really flexible, um, very durable. I've actually used this bait multiple times, and you can't even tell. Um, and one of the coolest things I thought about the swim bait is here in South Florida, we are frequently using sw uh, swim baits, and I mean like really, really often, uh, mostly because everything eats paddle tails, everything eats swim baits, the snook the peacocks, the largemouth. It's just because there's so much fish around here and a lot of white baits that they really do enjoy something like this. Um, and I think this weekend I'm actually going down to the Everglades and I'm going to bring this guy just because I know it's going to do some work. Um, but very, very detailed design uh, Bass Reaper put into this. As you guys can tell, there's actually ridges along the side. So just to show you a traditional, um, a traditional form of a fluke, this isn't a paddle tail, this is a fluke. Um, and flukes tend to not have too many details in them, but just to give you an example of what a regular fluke is and what a, what a Bass Reaper uh, paddle tail looks like. Um, very simplistic look on a fluke. Um, you can't really tell that there's any ridges, you can't see any eye, uh, there's no form of structure in the body of this fish, but it is a relatively good uh, bait just because it's got that belly form and it does the job. But they went so in detail with the, uh, with the paddle tail that you could see the ridges of the fish on the top. And they kind of even put an imprint of the fish's eye, the gill plate, um, and that goes a long way. And the way they designed it makes the tail move really well. So if you guys buy these and you try to swim this bait, it's actually really impressive how quickly it swims. Um, and with the peacock bass in that video that I was talking to you about, you guys can check that out, it was attracting them so easily. Sometimes you gotta really jerk these baits. All I would do is reel it in very slowly the way they designed this, this thing is just moving so rapidly that there's no, there's no need to even switch the bait. So when it comes to salt water, because down here in South Florida, we've got salt water, we've got brackish water, we've got all sorts of uh, different bodies of water that hold different types of fish. You're going to want to use something like this just because it attracts a lot of attention and white goes a long way in murky water, as you guys know. So different times of year, um, either or of these baits, we're only talking about bass reaper baits right now, um, would be more effective. Um, the craw is a really, really good uh, color combination, the sparkly metallic. Um, they really thought it out. And it does, the craw is, you know, with every company you see, it's relatively the same. Um, but theirs is really, I've noticed that theirs is really durable. So I bought a product off, I uh, forgot what company it was, but I bought it from Bass Pro and it was a craw. And I could use it once or twice. But I think the rubber that Bass Reaper is using is just a little bit more durable than the rubber that you find elsewhere. And I say that because I've used every single one of these baits that you guys have seen so far at least a couple, you know, like five times or more. And for soft baits, you know, you could use them five times, but you keep on puncturing it, it comes off. Uh, by the time you reel in your third fish, it's got the teeth marks. But these guys, like, their rubber is really, really durable. Um, and I'm actually really impressed with the baits that they've dropped so far. So all these baits are going to be below. If you guys want to check them out, I'm going to leave the link in the description. You guys could check them for yourself, buy them on your own. Um, see how they work for you, but definitely has been a game changer since I started using Bass Reaper baits versus other ones. And I'm not saying just because they make the fish bite more, but these have lasted really long, like oddly, oddly long, like especially for soft baits. Um, and as far as color scheme goes, 
the white on the paddle tail, like I said, perfect for the summertime. You're hitting some uh, really thick, uh, really thick brush, really dark water. You're gonna want to use a paddle tail just to get their attention. Um, and this little June bug, it's really interesting to see um, the way it works so far. And it actually has a little connection between the two, um, the two claws, I guess you would say, in a natural bait that would be a claw. And it keeps it intact. And I don't think I've seen that on other baits. I see it on a lot. Um, and I actually like it like this better than when it's loose. It makes it, it, makes it all you know, swim a lot nicer. Um, and the whole point of this is supposed to resemble a crawfish. Crawfish swim backwards when they feel endangered. They walk forward, but they swim backwards. So you basically hook it the same exact way, but keep in mind that you're using a crawdad. Um, and the best way to uh, kind of go with the hook setup is always gonna be weedless. And I'm always gonna vouch for weedless because you're not gonna get any weeds easier to the bite and it's a lot easier to capitalize on fish. So by using all these baits, I would say my favorite down in South Florida was the lizard. Um, and I can't say exactly whether it was the weighted lizard or the weed or the, or the uh, regular uh, lizard rig, um, but bass do tend to love this rig. And especially this one actually, now that I think, this one did a lot of work. Stayed right on the surface, right where the bass tend to, uh, tend to bite when they're spawning. And it was, back-to-back -back action with this one. Um, but definitely a great company, guys, to check out. Bass Reaper's done amazing stuff for us in the past. Uh, if you guys want, go ahead and check the link in the description. Lots and lots of stuff to uh, scroll through. Um, I know they're in the process of making some new baits. Um, and like I said, guys, Man Made Customs is an outdoor e-commerce. Um, we've got lots of different outdoor companies and our main goal is to kind of create the same space you see on Amazon, eBay, and all these companies, but just for outdoor guys like us. So. If you, if you sell hooks, you know, knives, reels, or basically, you know, anything outdoor related for that matter, uh, we have a very wide, wide range. Uh, if you guys want to check us out, it's manmadecustoms.com, www.manmadecustoms.com. Um, and down, you know, over there, we've got so much stuff. Uh, and like, like I said, we're a startup. We're trying to get off the ground, but it's a really ambitious idea. And I think that um, a lot of people are going to benefit from us, uh, from us doing this. You know, there's, there's lots and lots of ways to, to make money on Man Made Customs if you're in that outdoor realm. So you don't necessarily have to open, a, open up a shop with us. You could actually uh, open up a classified. So let's say I use this, I, you know, I doubt anyone's gonna sell just a single bait. But let's say you have a bag of baits, a bag of Bass Reaper baits, you used them a couple times, um, but you're going away for the winter and you, don't, you have no use for these baits anymore. You could sell on Man Made Customs classifieds. So kind of like Craigslist. So you could sell a classified item. If I wanna sell this reel, I could sell this reel on Man Made Customs as a classified uh, reel, as a classified posting. Or you could take the route of opening up your own shop. You could do both, you could do one or the other. So that's the cool thing. I haven't seen many outdoor platforms, if any at all, um, actually do this concept. And that's why I'm so excited for, um, to see what this eventually becomes because it's a really big deal um, to be able to you know, get rid of all, you know, last season's hunting equipment, last season's fishing equipment at a platform where people are literally only just looking for that kind of stuff. And I think that's the game changer. You can post it on Offer Up, Craigslist, this, this, and that, but it's not just outdoor guys looking for these products. This is, you know, there's all sorts of people on there. So it's really narrow stream for anybody who's in the outdoor realm. You know, if you're selling a classified, you wanna open up a shop, but like I said, you don't wanna pay GoDaddy, you don't wanna pay um, Shopify, all these people a monthly fee or the annual fee to get started, to get off the ground, get people to see your product, you can open up a shop for free and it's your shop. So I have a shop on Man Made Customs and I do a lot of marine life artwork. So right now I have a painting listed and I was thinking if I were to list this painting anywhere else on my own website, I would have to pay a ton of fees. There would be maintenance on the website. Man Made Customs maintains your shop, your site on, you know, it's, it's included in this free price. So. Basically, you have two of the best worlds, posting classifieds or open up your own shop. You know, instead of, you know, the only difference would be you have your own URL. But there are plenty of companies who have already signed up with Man Made Customs who are doing well just selling their products, not having to worry about hosting fees, and basically avoiding all the problems of owning your own um, actual uh, online store. So once again, guys, if you're interested in opening up a shop or selling used gear, go to Man Made Customs, post it. Um, advertise it you guys will see some some cool stuff happen so once again thank you for watching uh, I'm gonna feed my bass really quick we might just show you that but stay tuned
Uh, once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. And check us out, www.manmadecustoms.com. Thank you. Let's drop it. Boom. Wow.